I don't know about you, but back in my day, an innie was a belly button that poked in. Today, it's a bread clip looking device worn by all the cool kids on their shoes and a product that raised 10 grand in 10 days on Kickstarter. I don't know, the young people of today. Welcome to the Small Business Big Marketing Show, where successful small business owners share their secrets to tank your marketing to the next level. Now here's your host, Tim Reid. G'day listeners and welcome back to another episode of Australia's number one marketing show. I am your host, Timbo Reid, coming to you from Melbourne, Australia, but you, so much more importantly, are a motivated small business owner, ready to crank out some great marketing in order to grow that baby of yours into whatever you wish it to be. And that's what we do around here. That is why this show exists, thanks to the very good folk at Net Registry. Hey, big show today. Always a big show. Got a fellow uh, joining me later on, Bart Atherinos. He has a very cool little brand called Innies. Young Melbourne entrepreneur is Bart. Also got a great listener question. What are you reading? Hey, like that? So simple. Uh, got a marketing quote of the week, which I think will, uh, oh, might inspire you, might motivate you. I don't know. Do something. It'll move you forward. And we've got a fair bit more to cover. So without further ado, let's get stuck right in. Small business, big marketing with Tim Reid. Smallbusinessbigmarketing.com. Okay, now as you know, This show is made possible by the very good folk at Net Registry, and your online marketing efforts are made better thanks to the very good folk at Net Registry. So um, if you are struggling with creating your digital footprint, if you are not creating your digital footprint, then let me tell you, team, you're leaving money on the table. You got to. You are who Google says you are. Scary, I know, but you think about how you go about buying things, researching things to buy. And what do you do? You go online. You look at people's websites. You check their social media. You might even click on a Google ad or a Facebook ad. They're all the things Net Registry sort out for you. So if any of those things uh, you're not doing or are holding you back because you're trying to do them yourself, give Net Registry a call or visit them at netregistry.com.au and see how they can help you. No pressure, no obligation. Just ask the questions that are on your mind and tell them Timbo sent you. Righto. How are you? You good? Looking forward to a, uh, a year ahead? You are excited by the business prospects that face you? You're nervous? You're scared? Are you waking up in the morning excited to do what you are doing in your business? I hope so. If you're not... Maybe go back and listen to last week's episode. Steve Huey, I Fly Flat. He is a man who turned his passion for frequent fly points into a business and a very successful business. That had some great feedback on that episode. But seriously, if you are excited, fantastic. Harness that excitement and move forward steadily and quickly. And uh, if you're not excited, then look at what you're doing that isn't kind of lighting your fire and get rid of it or delegate it. Because that's what I'm going to do. I am going to focus on delegating. I'm going to share my delegation journey inside the Small Business Big Marketing Forum, if you want to follow me. But I haven't been good at delegating, and I need to do more of it. There are certain things that, because I do them myself, hold me back. I intend to get rid of those things and pass them on to others or, or delete them. Maybe they're just not adding the value that uh, I was hoping they would. So I am going to get rid of some things in my business life. But uh, I encourage you to do exactly the same if uh, if you're not excited about certain things in your business. So um, what else have I got going on? I've checked in on you. I've checked in on me. I've got a speaker's retreat coming coming up. Going off on in three days' time, I'm heading up to Noosa, Noosa, darling, uh, in Queensland, where six or seven speakers were getting together, and we are just going to interrogate each other about our businesses, what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong, sharing our combined knowledge. Of course, I'll tell them how podcasting can help grow their business. 
Others will share other marketing tactics they're using, but I'm really excited about that. Uh, a past guest of the show, Amanda Stevens, is putting it on. Bless her. And uh, yeah, we're all getting together, and I just think it's a good idea. Maybe you could do that in your business. Pull together some people who are in business. Maybe they're in the same business as you, non-competing. Maybe they're even competing. And share your ideas. Just kind of opens up your mind a bit and um, can only do good. I'm quite excited about what is going to come of that. And uh, I'll certainly be sharing snippets of it here and lots of big snippets of it inside the Small Business Big Marketing Forum. Hey, and listen to that point. If you want to talk marketing, if you want to grow your business through smart marketing, head over to crankmymarketing.com and join the forum. I'm in there every day and there's plenty of other motivated business owners doing exactly the same thing. All right, getting close to that interview with Bart from Innies. Bart, got a great question, a great listener question from Emma Clements of No Business. People should put their business name on these questions they send me so I can promote their business. But uh, Emma's got a Hotmail address. I don't know. I've said it before, but if you're in business, don't have a Hotmail. Don't be at Hotmail.com or at Gmail.com. That looks messy. Be at your domain name, .com or .com.au or whatever your uh, TLD is. Emma has a beautifully simple question. She says, hey, Timbo, love your show. Thanks, Em. I love you for loving it. She says, what are you reading? See ya. <laughs> love it. Okay. First of all, Em, I find it hard to read business. I know you're probably asking about what business books are you reading. I'm kind of assuming. Um, business books, I, I do all my reading at night in bed, and I can't read business books at night in bed because it leaves me far too stimulated and excited, and I have to get up and start creating and doing things as opposed to sleeping. And I do need a good eight-hour sleep. I'm one of those people. Uh, that said, um, I bought an iPad Air 2 before Christmas and with the express purpose of reading more blogs. So I spend good my, my uh, daytime reading hours, maybe in a cafe or just around the pool at home or whatever, reading blogs. No one in particular, depending on what topic I'm interested in at the time, I'll just Google the topic name and then blog and see what comes up. But I'm really, uh, I, I like that. I am reading two books at the moment, Em. I'm reading a great book called Sapiens, A Brief History of Humankind by a guy called Yuval Noah Harari. Oh, wow. It's, it's full on. This is the thrilling account of our extraordinary history from insignificant apes to rulers of the world. It's really good. <laughs> and believe it or not, there is some discussion around how we've created brands out of thin air. And I didn't expect that to be in a book that was about humankind, but there is some marketing discussion in there. Didn't buy it thinking there was, but there is. So really enjoying that. And I am also reading a bit of trash. Well, it's not really trash, but trashy type book called Fall of Giants by Ken Follett. And that's good. That's just a bit of, um, that gets me to sleep at night. So they're the two books that I've got going. I'm also reading my manuscript of the book that I'm writing. Haven't spoken a lot about that, mainly because I didn't want to put the pressure on me of kind of, I don't know, letting the world know how my book is coming along each week. Um, kind of might have made sense too to build up a bit of kind of, you know, excitement, but I'm cool about that. Um, so I'm reading my map, finished writing it, now reading it, reflecting on it, checking it. It's handed, I've handed it over to an editor who's um, fixing it up, grammar, punctuation, all that type of stuff. So that's exciting as well. That'll be out, um, yeah, let's sort of, as I said, first quarter. I think I said this a few episodes ago, first quarter of 2015. So uh, look out for that. I'm not going to reveal too much because um, – when it comes, when once it's off to the printers, there's a few loose ends I need to tie up around domain names and all that type of stuff. So um, yeah, it won't reveal too much. Suffice to say that it is going to be a book you will love. It's written for you, anyone listening to this show and who owns a business and wants to crank out some great marketing. It's written for you. 
That is my answer to Emma Clement's question. Em, thanks for that question. Listeners, you got a question? Cool. Send it to questions at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com and I would love to tackle it. Righto, let's get stuck into today's guest. His name, Bart Atherinos. His company is Innies. You can tell Bart you heard him on this here show by going over to his Twitter handle. Tweet him at my Innies, I double N I E S. Tell him you heard him on the show. He'll like that. So Bart hit me up um, a few months ago and said he was launching a, a, a venture on Kickstarter called Innie. And in a little over 10 days, he achieved $10,000. Would I like to interview him? I sort of uh, put that one on the burner, you know, the back burner, and thought, yeah, I reckon I might at some point. We've had a couple of interesting discussions around crowdfunding. Uh, Simon Griffiths from Who Gives a Crap of more recent times. Uh, Chris from Tracker. So this Kickstarter stuff, crowdfunding, I'm liking it more and more, particularly anyone who's got a little business idea they want to get off the ground and don't have the money. So I hit Bart up early uh, later in uh, November and said, um, hey, how'd you go? And he said, yeah, we launched. We actually launched and uh, had a really successful Kickstarter. We since, we've since stocked in a national retailer with another one to stock mid-November, so things are going really well. Oh, by the way, Innies is like a little bread-shaped device that you put inside your runners to tuck your laces in. You know how the young people of today don't like tucking in their laces? Well, Innies means that they can get them out of the way. Bart goes on to say negotiations with various international distributors also, so we expect to be stocked internationally early next year. That'll be 2015. Uh, it's been tricky for us, though, as not as we are trying to market the product and brand on a shoestring budget. <laughs> boom, boom. We're also having to educate people on what the product is, as there's nothing like it in the market. This is really interesting part of the discussion because he does. He has to let people know that this product exists. People aren't searching for it. We're confident in solid growth once we establish some major distributors and start marketing, educating at a grassroots level, such as being at events and music festivals that our target market attend. Love it. So I started off this fireside chat by showing my age. Hey, Bart, an innie for me, mate, was a belly button that didn't poke out. <laughs> We're reinventing it. There's a new meaning now. There's innies and outies. If you tuck your laces in, you're an innie. If you put time on the outside, you're an outie. You so which, young, which are you? You Gen Y, <laughs> you. Hey, uh, so well, explain it. What 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 is an innie, and what problem does it solve? Yeah, so I um I guess I really created to solve my own problem to start with, and then um uh, I found many more people in the same position. So usually a lot of people might notice tuck their laces into their shoes. Um, usually for a nice a nice bowless look. Um, and in doing so, you've obviously got all that excess lace stuffed inside, so it's either uncomfortable or the laces keep loosening, so you're forever uh, retying them or tying knots inside. So, um, yeah, for some, I can't really remember the exact uh, Big Bang moment, but um, I, I found a um, just a commercial sort of clip uh, that did the job for a little while and uh, put it inside the shoe and was, uh, enabled me to cut away the lace. And um, that was my comfort. It was holding the tension, and uh, it all sort of grew from there. So up until uh, and the innie, the invention of the innie, uh, people were – so the idea was a bowless look um, and people were just tucking their laces in and what's standing on them, kind of tucking them yeah, under their feet? Yeah, um, there's a couple of ways to do it. I mean, uh, you, could, yeah, you'd tie, you could tie a knot on the inside to keep it keep it tight, but then you couldn't really adjust the tension if you mm-hmm. wanted to tighten them uh, if you were skateboarding or something like that. So it was a bit limiting in that regard. And then people would either cut – cut the lace off then if they had tied a knot. Um, otherwise, if they didn't like the tie a knot, they'd stuff it yeah, right, right into the shoe or even under the sole of the shoe if the yeah, right. come up. So there's a few different methods and a few different ways, and people even tie a bow and tuck it behind their tongue as well, but they find when they're walking, it's putting tension on the top of their foot. So there's <laughs> multiple ways of people trying to uh, do this. Fashion, but, yeah. fashion, it's a killer, isn't it? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> it's, uh, it's function over fashion, yeah. You, you, better, you better hope that slip-ons don't make it come back. Well, that's right. I mean, it's, it's pretty bizarre. It's sort of like, well, there are alternatives, yet we all still want to use laces. So um, I'm, I'm not complaining. There's massive market out there. Well, so what, what, what are the alternatives? Velcro? Not a good look. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's pretty old school. It's what your grandparents are wearing. <laughs> exactly right. Now, for listeners, um, and any, I'm going to describe it. It kind of looks like one of those clips that hold um, a loaf of bread at the, you know, the bag of 
that comes – how do I explain this? You know the little bread clips. It looks yeah. like one of them, but it's it's double-sided. Is that – how would you yeah, describe the look or, of it? Um, even though a uh, balloon clip. Is oh, yeah, the, um, balloon clip. Yeah, so it's sort of what ties off the end of a balloon. So you, you wrap the wrap the lace around the clip, and it sort of it holds tension tight. Um, within this house, it all, it's all positioned within the shoe. Love yeah. it. So now, Bart, you're um, how old are you, mate? I'm 25. 25. So you were telling me you are working. Uh, do you mind me saying what you're doing now? Uh, yeah. Yep. It's, so you are working. You're full time uh, at a Telstra retail store. You're slowly backing that off. Uh, you're yep. now well and truly part time as any starts to take off. Um, yep. And to help you do that, you ran a very successful crowdfunding campaign on Kickstarter. Yes. Correct? That is correct. Uh, now, yep. let's talk about that because you have, um, right now, I'm looking at you've got 1,137 backers. You've raised $17,829 with a, with a target of uh, a target goal of ten thousand dollars. So well done to you, mate. Thank you. That yeah. is that doesn't seem like a lot of dough. That said, Innie's not like I'm guessing not the most expensive thing to manufacture. No. But you've got to now support yourself uh, yep. as you slowly wean yourself off full time work. Um, let's first talk about um, the success of your crowdfunding campaign. W- why did you choose Kickstarter over Indiegogo or OzCrowd or any of these other sites? Yeah, I think um, it seems that Kickstarter has a bit of a more of a tight knit, I guess, community um, in terms of there's a lot of forums and a lot of information out there, and, and people are really willing to to help each other out. Um, so I went onto a lot of Facebook groups and put my, I guess, previews of my campaign and things, and some of the stuff that people would come back with, just sort of about shipping, um, shipping times, and and how to mention things and how long your videos should be. So there seems to be a lot more community around it. Um, and it was one of the one of the first ones to market. So at the time when I was sort of researching it around, um, Kickstarter was probably one of the, the bigger um, bigger traffic sites. Um, and yeah, it just seemed to be a bit more of a stronger um, a stronger brand. Whereas Indiegogo's got really no limits, no rules to to what the campaigns are. Um, so it was kind of associated to pretty random items. Whereas Kickstarter was you know, still kind of held their own. They're now flexing their guidelines a bit now. But um, yeah, that was the main reason. Just more the support um, and, and the traffic. Now, it's interesting. Uh, two interviews I've done recently. One was with um, the creator of Tracker, uh, Christian. Yeah. And then actually yesterday I interviewed a fellow, uh, his name, Simon Griffiths. And Simon is a toilet paper manufacturer. And he has a, a brand called Who Gives a Crap. And uh, yes, yeah. He, yeah, he used Indiegogo. In fact, uh, Christian and Simon both used Indiegogo to great yep. success, and both of their um, oh, in fact, Christian's wasn't too out there, but Simon's um, Indiegogo video was right out there. He sat on a toilet for fifty hours until he raised his um, required <laughs> pledge of fifty thousand dollars, and that was all yep. web uh, live web streamed. So, okay, so uh, Kickstarter. Good, strong community. Someone like yourself who's new to the game, uh, has not yep. run a business before, had a lot of support from the people around it, which is incredibly important, isn't it, to uh, be yep. able to ask questions and get, you know, get get solid answers from people who have done it before. Yeah, hundred um, percent. Mm. It was yeah. That's that was the biggest thing. Is I spent oh, at least a month. Um, just watching all the successful, all the failed campaigns, reading all the forums, um, just yeah, research and development essentially. It's essentially what you would do to start a business. Um, cool. But I did that on on Kickstarter because that's a st- that's the make or break. Um, that sets your it's yeah, it's a perfect platform because you only have to build a prototype. You don't have to have a shed full of of stock. You you build the prototype, you sell the concept, and you know that that value uh, validates it in the market straight away whether whether it flies or dies. Okay, so walk us through, uh, walk us through your Kickstarter. What would you call it? Page, I guess, which starts with a yep. video. Yes, yeah. So uh, they said the videos are definitely the most important. Um, there's no real limit to time, but again, from all the research and things, they say to try and keep it down to sort of three to four minutes. Um, so that's, I guess, that's that's your pitch. That's as if you're standing in front of a, a wholesaler or you're standing in front of someone that you're trying to sell your product to. You're explaining not only just the product but with kickstarter and i guess any crowdfunding it's really people wanting to get involved in feeling like they're helping someone or helping a movement or helping something like that so um it's very important to sell yourself um Mm -hmm. sell why you're doing it and then sell the product yeah um, because i guess like anything like i always say people buy from people so like you might have a great idea um you star in the video so you're, you're as much selling you 
and getting people to trust you and become familiar with you as you are the idea of an innie. Yeah, yeah, exactly, 100%. Mm. So the structure of that video, was there a particular kind of three to four minutes, you know, um, it's yep. kind of not a long time, but it's also a long time online because we, you know, our, we have the attention spans of gnats these days. Exactly. Um, exactly. What was the structure? Was there? Did you kind of break it down into three or four chunks? Um, yeah, it was kind of obviously the introduction um, of myself, the reason, um, reasoning behind it, showed the developing development stage as well. So it just showed that it wasn't just hacked up overnight. Uh, there was a bit of thought and it's. Um, bit of reliability in the actual product itself because again people you know, they're all over the world so they can't actually touch and feel and see the quality um so you're showing that you've, you've put time and effort into it you're showing them the problem it's solving you're showing the solution um i guess kind of like in, in, in copy you know you, you're trying to you're introducing the product and and why why people need or want this product mm-hmm. i'm then, just scrolling uh, through your page copy. you know um it's yeah. it's really good i mean you've got you got really good quality photography. You've got yep. some GIFs showing the product in action. In fact, you've got lots and lots of photography. It feels like you've got the product. You've got looks like a counter card or some kind of packaging that's done. You've got yep. – mate, it, it, it's essentially a website. If you weren't asking for pledges, if you were just wanting to do sales, it's essentially a website. Do you mind if I ask how much dough you threw at it and how you come, came to such great design? Yeah, well, um, well, fortunately, I had a um, had a friend that loves had a good camera and just loves all that. So, me and uh, me and him sort of ran around our, our neighbourhood in, in Windsor and, and took some really good shots in laneways and laneways and things like mm-hmm. that. So, I was fortunate where we were, and um, uh, it was funny. Some of the videos that we did where it was like a slide effect. It was actually just on a uh, on a skateboard because we didn't have a slider, and um, and the tripod was a couple of uh, milk crates <laughs> stacked up. So, we didn't um, we didn't have the the best stuff. So, it would be cool to do a behind the behind the scenes sort of video but um you know we did what we could oh yeah i was fortunate to have someone around me that had a decent camera on there and um i guess i'm you know being i guess an entrepreneur i'm a bit, bit creative as well so it wasn't it wasn't too stale so we could um we could have a bit of fun with it and um yeah i think we've, we've produced something that was yeah definitely definitely you quite have, good. Mate. a very attractive young lady uh modeling innies uh friendly important <laughs> yeah as well yeah fortunate as well so i've got a good <laughs> good good crew of friends around me <laughs> uh, uh yes <laughs> Fantastic, uh, and obviously, um, getting all that information on Kickstarter. Well, they take a they clip the ticket, do they? Yeah. Um, so you don't pay to create that site, but they take a they take a cut. Yeah, so they, they take a cut um, on the total amount. So if you're successful, so if you're not, um, nothing's the the backers don't lose anything. Um, you don't lose anything. Kickstarter gets nothing. So it's only if you're successful, um, you pay the percentage of the total amount. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's only at the um, the end of the term is when um, all the backers will um, have their credit cards, I guess, deducted as well. So as people are they're essentially pledging to say yes, if this comes through, I will, I will, you know, I will, I will pay for this amount. Um, so that's another thing to be wary of is that by the end of the campaign, um, people can um, decline before their card is deducted as well. Uh. So. Um, so there's usually they say five ten percent um, drop off um, depending what, on what the did project. you say? Um, mine was quite low, it was only sort of five, probably less than five percent. Nice. Um, but you get those more sillier projects where people just say they want to be a part of it. Like um, I don't know if you saw that, but there was a potato salad uh, thing on Kickstarter which raised like seventy thousand dollars through its campaign, so a guy could make a potato salad. Um, but by the end of it, he ended up with about thirty. Which is still great <laughs> and crazy, but um, uh, yeah, it's those kind of things like that. So, so, so just to, be, yeah, to make a like a potato salad that he could then um, wholesale into no, supermarkets, make, or to make a potato just, salad. Yeah, he purely took a photo of a potato salad and he said, "I'm thinking of making one." Um, it, you know, he took the crap out of it a bit and sort of saying, "I'm I'm, I'm ready for the next stage of my life. I want to do this." <laughs> and um, yeah, it was just one of those viral things. You know, people <laughs> wanted to get involved, and he dead set. And he think he started. He's, they have stretch goals. So if you if you go over your um your goal, you can sort of say, "Look, okay, for an extra ten thousand dollars, I'll do this. I'll do this." Um, and he ended up throwing a potato salad party and things like this. So I'm not sure if that actually eventuated. But um, yeah, so yeah, yeah. And those and those that's, those sort of things you, were usually on Indiegogo because they're a bit more flexible. But mm-hmm. um, since I'd been on there, Kickstarter has started to um, yeah, to get, become a bit more broader. But um, sky's the limit. If you get if as creative as you are, you can um, go on Kickstarter. It really is. I feel like this yeah. whole crowdfunding thing, whilst it's been around for a while. Uh, I think the bar is pretty low in Australia. You'd know more than me, yeah. but when I no, do definitely. come across them, it's more often than not 
an American um, project? Yeah, yeah, and definitely, and the traffic on the site as well is massive um, from America and um, from America. I mean, Australia is is getting up there, um, but yeah, it is really quite new. It's when um, as the day I actually launched on mine, um, like the kick, Kickstarter officially came around, I had a little um, education session, I guess, to um, into Melbourne, and, and I guess it went around Australia. So it was, it was even when I launched, I think it was about it was about six months into when Australian projects could actually go on Kickstarter. Whereas before it was anyone in the world could purchase, but only American and Canadian people could actually could post put something on there. So yeah, it was it was quite fresh. Now now sort of going on over a year or so now, mm-hmm. um, it's still getting some traction. But again, it's all about the numbers and the traffic coming through. Um, but yeah, it's a good thing is it's open to the world. So that's what I love I, I about have, you know part of the good. Well, there's many good things about living in Australia, but um, we are a little bit behind this stuff, so we can watch yeah. and learn. I, I, it's the same with podcasting. You know, yeah. anyone listening to this who thinks, "Oh, the boat's left the shore," you know, it's too late to do a crowdfunding project. It's too late to get a podcast up. It's too late to enter any of this modern marketing. It's just not. Um, no. It, it, look, I'd say the same if I was in America, I think, as well, but particularly in Australia. Um, I reckon if you went out onto the street um, and said, you know, have you heard of crowdfunding? Oh, I reckon you might get what, what – I'd say five out of ten people say yeah, – now, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then you'd say, well, you know, name – off the top of your head, name a crowdfunding site, and I reckon that might drop to maybe like three out of ten. Yep. Depending on which street, mate. Hi- hi- hipster wins. <laughs> well, hipster wins, or it might well. be up there a bit. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. No. Hundred percent. I think. Yeah. People. Yeah. We definitely need to realise that. And I guess the same thing. I mean, um, it's market validation again. You're seeing what works in different markets. Obviously, we're, we're di- different people to with different demographics to other countries. But um, you can you can you know get a pretty good idea of what what's coming, uh, what trends are coming, mm. and if you can try and get in the forefront of it and take a bit of a risk, a bit of a gamble with it. Um, then you can be in, be in front of the wave. So, uh, what now for any Bart? Yeah, so we're um, in pretty deep discussions with a few international distributors. So we've been talking to them for a few few months now. So we're about to um, cross the T's and dot the I's, which is really exciting. So that's through um, through some Scandinavian countries and um, and Korea and a few other few other major countries as well. So really pushing the distribution end of it. Um, we've already secured a couple of national retailers as well. So they're currently stocking in uh, City Beach, which is like a, a surf and skate retailer, mm-hmm. um, which has been really exciting. So you know, we've only really been in the public, available in public from June. So it's, it's all pretty pretty close um, from launch and we've done some really great stuff. So it's just keeping that momentum going. And um, yeah, I think really trying to get on board with the distributors. I think we, we kept the last few months just testing the different sales channels, online sales and through the website and direct sales and small stores. And it's you know, it's not our game. I'm not, I'm not a salesperson. No. I want to keep inventing and, and recreating sort of niche markets and stuff like that. So we just want to try and lock down some distributors to worry about the sales and we'll keep sort of um, yeah, redeveloping the product and um, we've got some cool collaborations coming up. It's one of those products that people don't know they – well, don't know it exists and don't know they need it necessarily. Well, maybe they know they need it. Maybe their laces are giving them the shits the way they're tucking them in under their feet. Yeah. But they're not going – you know, they're not scratching their head going, I wish there was a solution. They're probably just accepting exactly. the fact. So that's exactly. a real marketing challenge for you, isn't it? Yeah, it, it's yeah, it's, it's, it's an education thing first. Um, it's, it's for a problem that yeah, people we say it's a problem that they don't realise they have. And as as you just said, then yeah, they might think oh this is annoying, but they don't know of anything else that exists. So they're not saying oh I might just go to Target and pick up some of these innings mm. because you know, this is annoying me. So yeah, hundred percent. We're founding. We just went to a uh, sneaker freaker swap meet, and I was I was there at one of the stalls and really demoing and showing the product and it was really good to see that you know over people just giving us weird looks as they walk past trying to figure out what these things were yep. um but yeah once i actually got them over and, and explained it you know the conversion was over 80 percent of people were buying them just to at least try and from different range from kids for them for school kids and uh all the way up to people's parents you know, if they're um if they're disabled or they're overweight or anything like that they're um you know so they don't have to keep retying their laces um even got a gentleman in texas america he just um give us some feedback he's in a wheelchair even um and he loves them because he for some reason he wants to wear laced shoes, and he can now just slip his just slip his foot like shoes on his foot, and he doesn't have to worry about the laces coming on. Love up. it. So um, there's a really I interviewed a guy uh, Phil McKenney uh, two or three years ago. He's um he came up with an innovation process called Killer Innovations, and at the at the, the premise of Killer Innovations is that it uh you ask killer questions in order to get killer ideas, and um one of his questions was who uses your product in an unexpected way. 
and you kind of just highlight it. You've kind of you didn't ask yourself that question, but it's showing itself in the sense that you've invented this for hip. Any was for hipsters is for hipsters, but all of a sudden you've realised that there's a market for overweight people, for disabled people, uh, which is kind of interesting. Almost does that mean that you need to look at the way, therefore, that you package it and promote it to those new markets? Yeah. Exactly that, yeah. So um, it was put to me, you know, oh, these things could be in chemists and your targets and Woolworths and all those kind of things. And um, it, it's something that, yeah, you know, we have to think of the total branding. So I don't really want to see any brand in a chemist. Yeah, and, you know, and the value of the, you, know, you can buy a pair of shoes from Target for, for 5 or $6, whereas I'm trying to sell some, you know, plastic products for $6. So there's different, there's that there, that whole side of things that, which is where I want to start you know, focusing on and breaking yeah. down the niche and redesigning the packaging and even the products. We can redesign the products a little bit so they're a bit easier to install for, for the elderly and for the younger kids and stuff as well. So yeah, it's really, it's really great. So we're still trying to, we're pushing this to the, yeah, the hipster sort of skate scene um, as it is now. And then um, as, as the product develops and we've, I guess, secure a network of sales, then we can sort of start yeah, breaking down these niches, which, I mean, are still massive niches. Um, but, yeah, they're, 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 I guess, are a modification of the product. So do you uh, – so you're going to rename it, um, redesign it? Potentially, yeah. Or it might be like, you know, a you know, shoelace, safety lace by any or something like that, you know. So they're still trying to associate it, I guess, to any um, or, or just, yeah, or just totally repackage it, I guess, like what – I guess what brands do with uh, cereal, you know, they can be the same cereal in, in different, in three different um, branded packages. So um, all that's kind of, I mean, because discussions with a few various people that are mentors and stuff that can mm. help with that. But right now, obviously being a, being a one and I've got, I've got a, a business partner in Sydney, I've bought on uh, just before Kickstarter to help with the promotion. So between the both of us, it's, we really need to prioritize and put the, put the blinkers on to make sure that we've you know, got the priority of um, getting some income in first before Total. we start taking over the world. Wow, such a great marketing challenge! Such yeah. a great marketing challenge to to extend yeah. into those other into those other markets. Um, yeah. So the idea of so any I like the way you've kind of identified sneaker freakers and for listeners, what they, how would you uh, describe them? There's kind of a, a group of people. Can, well, they are they're sneaker freakers. A sneaker freakers, yeah. aren't they? <laughs> Pretty much that. Yeah, they um, they really love their shoes, and it was the first event um, I've ever been to, even just walking in. And um, it, you know, these people are in these kids, even they're ranging from fifteen um, up to fifty. You know, they're, they're old school freakers as well, and um, yeah. yeah, they're they're spending two, three, four hundred dollars on sneakers, and and they're swapping. It's a really tight knit community. They're really cool and, and open to everything. And um, so yeah, again, so them, you need to. That's kind of like you've got to seed those guys and girls and get them talking about it because again like people don't know these innings exist they're invisible to the you know for yep. all intents and purposes no one's going to see them even if yes. a even if a famous sneaker freaker is wearing innies no one will know so okay. i was talking to the yeah. girls at frank body scrub um uh, oh, yeah. a, a yep. few months ago and one thing they do very clever their instagram is kind mm. of the the the, the the main pillar of their marketing and they send a cool little box of Frank body scrub, which is a caffeinated body scrub with a Polaroid camera and some film to uh, um, celebs. And they yeah. ask the celeb to take some photos um, of themselves all scrubbed up and then post it onto their Instagram. And um, that re that's really working for them. I wonder if there's an yeah. idea there for you guys to, yeah, well, that's, yeah, that's another big challenge of us. It's not only that people don't know they it exists; it's that you can't. It's not going to sell itself as well. So, um, hmm. yeah, we've we've definitely identified these few barriers and challenges, and um, yeah, we're slowly sort of knocking knocking away at them. And um, yeah, so I guess it's just prioritizing which one we think is going to build and bring more value back in. Um, and and I guess really focus on that. What's your online uh, experience like your e-commerce experience are you happy with that it's yeah. like is that the lion's share of your sales at the moment or is it like just um, a bit of cream not, yeah it, it's i think we we had a had a point we spent about a month really focusing on it building the site that, to make it try and look look really nice to i guess which it does now I great believe. site great um, site. yeah so it sort of gives enough information about it it's nice pretty easy to navigate through and um we were trying to start building, con doing a whole content marketing thing. It's like the big buzzwords at the moment. So trying to do things around festivals and sneakers and all this sort of content, and that obviously takes time. Um, and trying to we figure out keywords and all this sort of stuff. So we were, we were sort of banging our heads against the wall with that, and we were still getting traction. We're getting some sales through, but um, yeah, again, it, we just went, we just couldn't get that viral 
sort of aspect to it where it was just sort of spreading on its own through Facebooks and stuff like that. So we're, um, we've are we now, yeah, refocused then to, to sort of retailers. So you're t- getting one order from a retailer blew out three months of online sales. So um, we've sort of then now shifted to uh, the website and the e-commerce being a support metric to, um, to our retailers and to our distributors rather than a, a primary sales channel. Yeah, right. I'm looking at your um, your Facebook again. That's a challenge, you know, like even for someone who's grown up with Facebook, um, creating a conversation, ongoing conversation that's interesting mm. and engaging around innies will be tough. Yep. And you're going to have to go beyond just showing photos of, sho- you know, cool photos of shoes and of people using innies. You've kind of got to yeah. find – I talk a lot about the editorial mission when it comes to both your social media and your content marketing. I, I call content marketing helpful marketing because it's kind of – that's what it yep. is, you know. But uh, And it could be helpful in the sense that it shows you how to use something or it can just be helpful in that it entertains you. And um, yeah. it's like yeah. what is that – what is that editorial mission for for innies? Yeah, we've been trying. Um, we're trying every every sort of fortnight. Um, is this post something like we did a story about the sneaker freaker event um, with us being there? We're doing. A, we're about to do a post about the upcoming music festivals uh, and things like that. So we are. We're trying to splash into that side of things to try and make it a bit interesting. But again, the other problem is is that people are reading that type of festival information from you know ten other primary sources that they yeah. trust they usually read. So it's kind of like, well, how's our um, we're not the best journalists either. So, I mean, how's our blog going to be more relevant or more interesting than that of yeah these these big um, big firms? So, what, what about yeah, like tra- who's wearing what shoes? Like, what if you just kind of broaden the conversation and just said, Let, let's own celebrity shoe wearing? Yep. Um, and all of us, you know, I, I even I'd be interested in that. Like, uh, what you know, what shoes is? I love Jamie Oliver. Right, no, yep. no secret to my listeners, and um, I'm every aspect of Jamie. So I'd be kind of interested to know. He he loves wearing his runners. Uh, yeah. So what yeah. runners is Jamie yeah. wearing? What he wears and how he wears it. Yeah. How, how's he wear them? That, that, anyway, that's a good example of like be, taking yeah. the story beyond the functional nature of innies and actually owning a space. Yeah, yeah, and that's yeah. We're still sort of bouncing around, and and, and I guess yeah, trying to create get that conversational piece sort of going and. Um, yeah, I think it's for, for anyone, it's an ongoing sort of challenge to try and keep fresh content and you have this great idea and then you, you post about it and then next week you're like, oh, now I need to think of something else. Well, that's where so, I, well, I, I, I won't give you a marketing lesson because this is more of an inspirational <laughs> story, but the editorial yeah. mission is broken up into three questions. What have you got to offer to who and what outcome can they expect? And um, yep. and that if, if, you, if you're clear on that, then creating an ongoing story is really easy. So the editorial mission for my show is marketing tips and tricks for small small businesses to generate more inquiry so therefore it opens it up to so many different stories and things that I can create in my marketing and um, so you probably guys need to do the same but hey Bart I love the story mate I love the whole anything I love your packaging I love the brand that you've created out of thin air Um, and um, I was laughing with my son Jack the other day he's doing business management at school and he's going you know how does that business make money dad and how does that business go about their marketing and he was looking at uh, the hose we were out in the garden and he's looking um, at the hose and he said um he said, hey, Dad, you know, that plastic bit on the hose, there must be someone who's making millions and millions of dollars just from that little bit of plastic that sits on the hose that yeah. you clip, you know, go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone invent- <laughs> someone, someone out there has invented every, you know, there's, there's, a, there's an inventor yeah. for, for everything. And, yeah. and I'd love to think that you are the guy at some point that I can point, you know, I can point to a pair of shoes one day and go, hey, Jack. Yep. That, that bloke's wearing innies, and I know the guy who made them, and he's <laughs> he's living on a yacht out in the Bahamas. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's that's a big picture. That's where yeah, that's where we're heading. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we got a few comments like that from the sneaker event as well. You know, it's like the paperclip idea. So it's uh, yeah, it's, that, it's just one of those simple things that it's kind of a given where it's just yeah, you'd expect every shoe just to come with them as an option, and that's 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 sort of where we're heading as well as we're targeting a few big brands to say hey. You know, don't we're not we don't we know this product doesn't suit everyone, but they're such a cheap thing. You know, just license it, put one in every box. Um, so that's yeah, there's a few few big things like that we're sort of trying to target as well. Oh, so, yeah, but I, I wish you that. all the success, mate. And I, I just think you've got so many wonderful business and marketing challenges ahead, uh, and yeah. uh, you, you're, you're clearly excited about it. I hope you make a gazillion dollars from it, mate. Thanks for sharing. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Your time. Thank you. Hey, I uh, hope you enjoyed that. 
I love talking to motivated young entrepreneurs, and I like what Bart's doing. So I want to share my top three thanks to the very good folk at Net Registry. Number one, I've been reminded of the importance of great design and the consistency required to get that design into the marketplace. Go and have a look at the Innie's website and the Innie's packaging and Innie's social media presence. There's, it's all beautifully designed and it's consistent across all touch points, you know? And that doesn't require money to be consistent, just requires discipline. So I really like, uh, I really like the design and I think more and more small businesses should focus on having great design for their brand. Number two, learning. Uh, just again, reminded of the importance of crowdfunding. You know, if you have got an idea, you want to get it off the ground, go and check out the crowdfunding video uh, or the page. I'll put a link in the show notes to it that uh, Bart did on Kickstarter and actually see the structure of it, all the story that was created in order to sell this concept called Innies that nobody had previously heard about. Number three, learning thanks to Net Registry and my conversation with Bart, you can make any product or service interesting. Yeah. Too many times I hear small business owners kind of go, oh, yeah, but my business isn't interesting. Make it interesting. Yeah. That's what branding's all about. Create the story, create the emotion, find the angles that will make it interesting. There is no business in this world that you can't make interesting. There, said it. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, as I said, you can hit Bart up on Twitter at myinnies, I double N I E S. And tell him you heard him on the Small Business Big Marketing Show. As we draw to a close, I have got the motivational marketing quote of the week. I love this one. Hey, but by the way, the intention of this little segment is to get you thinking. Go away and think how this quote applies to you and your business and how it can move you forward. All right? So today's quote. It's from Lee Odden of Top Rank Marketing. The quote, content is the reason search began in the first place. Content is the reason search began in the first place. Love that. It then begs the question, what is the best kind of content to create? You'll need to read my book for that. All righty, let's wrap things up. Next week, still deciding. Got a few interviews in the can. Uh, yeah, so I won't reveal too much. Still working on that big guest that I mentioned a couple of weeks ago. Have sec- he, he has he. Yeah, it's a he. He said yes, haven't got a date. So uh, won't say anything more there. Got some really inter- interesting interviews. Thinking of also going back and interviewing some past guests also over the coming weeks and months to see how they're going. Uh, don't forget, you want to talk marketing, See, I'll see you inside the Small Business Big Marketing Forum, if you like. Head over to crankmymarketing.com. If you want to get your online marketing sorted, head over to the very good folks at netregistry.com.au. But until then, I think it's time to get back into business. I've been Timbo Reid. Well, still am, really. Even when I push stop, I will be Timbo Reid. This has been, this has been, this is the number one marketing show in Australia, oh, I'm losing the plot. And may your marketing be the best marketing. See you next week. You've been listening to the Small Business Big Marketing Show with Tim Reed. Want more marketing goodness? Then visit smallbusinessbigmarketing.com.